In this video, we will learn about the mesh current method. We must first clarify what is a mesh. A mesh refers to the smallest individual loop found in a circuit. When I say smallest, it does not refer to the physical size of the loop, but rather, smallest here means that it does not contain any smaller loops within itself. For example, in this circuit, this is a mesh, and this is a mesh, but this is not a mesh. This is because we can see there are smaller loops within itself. We can still consider it as a loop nonetheless, so KVL still applies. Note that KVL applies to both loops and meshes. Now we can talk about the mesh current method itself. This circuit analysis method directly gives us the values and implicitly the directions of each mesh current. The currents found allow us to calculate the currents through each device so we know the potential difference across each device, and the power generated or dissipated by each device. The first step in the mesh current method is to assign all the mesh currents in the clockwise direction and give them a name, example, IA, IB, and so on. Subsequently, we will write a Kirchhoff's voltage law equation for each mesh current expressing each voltage change using the formula delta V equals to IR. This gives us a system of linear equations. Finally, we will solve the system of linear equations from step 2 to yield the mesh currents. Although the procedures look similar to that of the node voltage method, there are many different intricacies of the mesh current method and we will have to be clear on these differences. So here they are. Recall my sign convention. The voltage gain is being assigned as positive and the voltage drop is being assigned as negative. When passing through voltage sources, check the orientation of its terminals. Going from negative to positive is a voltage gain, whereas going from positive to negative terminal is a voltage drop. The net current of the common branch between two adjacent meshes is given by the difference of the individual mesh currents. We will elaborate more on this in examples. A KVL equation is to be written for a super mesh containing a current source. The current source dictates the branch current it is fixed on, and this gives another equation. Again, more on this in future videos. After solving the system of linear equations, if the current we obtain is negative, it means that it flows in the opposite direction of the direction we assigned it, but it still has the same magnitude. Hopefully, this list is exhaustive, but nonetheless, you will discover more intricacies through practice and experience. So let's try out this example. Hello everyone, just want to remind you that you look beautiful as always. So in this question, we're expected to find the mesh currents of this circuit. So the first step to take is to assign the mesh currents in the first place. So offhand, we have these two meshes, which is this mesh and this mesh. I'll just label them as IA and IB. Then following that, we can now write our KVL equations for each of the mesh. So looking at the KVL for mesh A. Now when we want to write our KVL, we have to start at a point in the mesh. So let's say for mesh A, I'm going to start over here, just right beneath the voltage source. So what I'll do is I'll kind of walk around the mesh following the mesh current the clockwise direction that I assign and go around sum up all the the voltage change that I encounter until I reach back to this dot I've started with okay so starting from the dot I walk up 
going the anti-clockwise direction and I meet this voltage source. Now what I'm doing when I walk through this voltage source is I'm going from its negative terminal to its positive terminal, right? I'm going up, so I'm going through from the negative to the positive terminal. Now this indicates a voltage gain. Now remember, the sign convention that we assign is that if I have a voltage gain, it will be positive. So that's why I'll start with uh, positive 10. Okay, remember that KVL states that the algebraic sum of all the voltage changes in a loop, in a closed loop, will be zero. So that's the definition we're going for. So after walking through the voltage source, we will go through this resistor. Now this resistor, the voltage change is given by minus IA, which is the current through the resistor, multiplied by 5 ohms. Okay, we're using the definition, the, the formula delta V equals to I times R. And going through the resistor will be a voltage drop, so that's why it's a minus here. Now, after going through the resistor, we will encounter this new voltage source. And when I do encounter it, still going, still going in the clockwise direction, we will going be we will be going from the positive excuse my stuttering from the positive to the negative terminal so as you go from the positive to the negative terminal what you're experiencing is a voltage drop and remember we assign a voltage drop as negative so it will be negative 9 volts and passing through the resistor we would have okay the resistor is a bit tricky because in order for us to use the formula delta V equals to I R, we have to note that this I is the net current through that branch. So what is the net current through that branch? Well, it's not clear because on the one hand, we have I A here and on the other hand, we have I B here. So if you want to find the net because we're going downwards, right? If we're still going in this clockwise direction, we're still going downwards. So if you want to find the net current going down, and IB is going up, IB is essentially opposing the direction we are trying to go through. So that means the net current will essentially be, the net current downwards will be IA minus IB. Okay? So again, it's a resistor, so it's a voltage drop. So the voltage drop associated with it will be negative IA minus IB multiplied the, by the resistance which is 10 ohms equals to okay so after going through the resistor we go through this segment of wire and we return back to this original starting point we had there's nothing so we just end it there so our KVL for mesh A is done it's finished so we can equate this all to zero. Now we can do some simplification. And now we can move on to the KVL for mesh B. I'll just do that. Okay. Again, we have to make some starting point. It doesn't matter where you start. I'll just start beneath this voltage source. So what I'll do is, starting from the voltage source, I'll walk around in the clockwise direction that I assigned for IB. Going around, we start. The first thing we encounter is the voltage source. We're going from the negative to the positive terminal, and this is associated with a voltage gain. Voltage gain is positive, so you will write positive 9 and moving on you will encounter this resistor the voltage change across the resistor is a voltage drop so it's negative and delta V equals to I times R the current through the resistor is IB given by this IB here so we have IB multiplied by the resistance 5 ohms and after the resistor, we encounter this voltage source. We're going from the positive to the negative terminal. 
which is a voltage drop so we assign it as a negative one and through the next 5 ohm resistor we have delta V equals to I times R uh, in this case I is still IB and R is 5 again resistors are associated with a voltage drop so it's negative so it's minus IB times 5 ohms and after this 5 ohm resistor we have this 10 ohm resistor again because it's in the common branch of the two meshes we have to consider the net current and if you're looking if you're going upwards because we're still continuing in this anti-clockwise sorry sorry the clockwise direction we're still continuing in this clockwise direction so as we pass through the resistor we're actually going up the branch this time so the net current upwards will be IB minus IA because IA is going downwards it's opposing the direction we're going through so the net current should be IB minus IA which is opposing us so again this is a resistor so it's associated with a negative it's associated with a voltage drop hence we assign it as negative the net current IB minus IA multiplied by the resistance which is 10 ohms equals to zero because we finally reached the starting point that we started with so we can further simplify this and we should get our second our second kvl equation and that should be it because we have two unknowns and two equations so we have our first equation here a second equation here now uh, additionally I'm just gonna write the matrix form of this now we can punch this into our calculator to solve for this matrix column here we should arrive at the answers we will get 0 0.5 amperes for IA and 0 0.65 amperes for IB. I think I want to make an additional uh, question here, and that is, well, we know the mesh currents through IA and the mesh current, then the mesh current through IB. But what would be the current, the branch current through the middle branch right here? Well. Okay, in order to find that, since we had the values of IA and IB, so what we can do is consider it like this. So IA, we assigned it down like this. Oh, and okay, an additional info. Because IA and IB are positive from the answers we got, it means that the assigned direction, the direction that we assumed it to have is indeed correct. So yes, IA does flow downwards and IB does flow upwards in the middle branch okay this is the middle branch I'm drawing and this is IA this is IA which is 0 0.5 amperes and this is IB which is 0 0.65 amperes so the way you want to find the current in the middle branch is first let's take a look who is the dominant current and what I mean by this is, who is the current larger in value? And the one larger in magnitude would be, okay, comparing IA and IB, IB would be bigger because it's 0 0.65, whereas IA is 0 0.5. So that means we know the direction will be upwards. The direction follows the dominant direction, the direction of the dominant current, which is the larger current. So to find the magnitude, we simply take the larger current minus the smaller current and that would give us the magnitude of the net current in the branch and we already know the direction from the direction of IB and so that's how you find the branch current in the middle branch